PineScript finally has a console that we can print stuff to. I mean, this is this is a dream come true for me. I've been coding in PineScript since uh, 2017, and I have dreamt of this day for years. I mean, it's such a basic feature of any programming language that is so invaluable for debugging your scripts and figuring out why it's not doing what you want it to do, which is, let's be honest, more often than we'd like. And oftentimes, depending on the complexity of your script, it can be quite difficult to figure out what the heck is going on under the hood and what you have overlooked in your code. This new feature helps us figure that out. So let's go over some of the uh, the words here. So we now have a new log function. I love the simplicity of this. It's very easy. Uh, this will be a short lesson or video because uh, it's not rocket science, this new feature. Thank goodness, it's really easy to use. Uh, if you've been following, following the channel for a while, you'll know that I recorded a video a few weeks ago or months ago now demonstrating a script by he who must not be named, a prominent Pine scripter who created a table that did this functionality. It printed logs onto our chart. The catch was it was a table on our chart and you can't copy text out of a table on a training view chart. And so you could display the text, but you couldn't do much with it. You definitely couldn't search through the logs, which you can now. So this new feature is incredibly useful. So we now have three new functions, log.error, log.info and log.warning. And they have a screenshot here. The gray text is a log.info. The yellow text is a log.warning and red text would be a log.error. There is no difference between these three other than the color coding in your uh, pine logs. Now, importantly, pine logs work everywhere. They work on historical bars, they work in real time and they work in replay mode and they can be called from any type of script. So indicators, strategies, libraries, and from anywhere in the script, including local blocks, loops, and from inside request.security and similar functions. So let's copy the example code here, jump into the Pine editor, and I'll break down what's happening. So here is the example script that they provide in the blog. And what we're doing here is we're just demonstrating all three different log types. So the first log.warning function call here is plotting every hundredth bar index into the logs. And first of all, I should probably show you how to open the Pine log console. It's pretty simple. All we do is click on this little elliptical hamburger, whatever they call this thing in the corner here and come down to Pine logs. Now I need to add this to my chart, I believe before it will do anything. So let's save this script and add it to my chart and I'll hide this script here. We'll get to what this is in a moment. Just hide these two scripts and open the Pine editor, come up to here and then Pine logs. And <laughs> that's fantastic. Thanks, Elon Musk. My Starlink apparently has a poor internet connection. Uh, one of the beautiful things about living in Australia, in Queensland at least, is that we have terrible internet here. Uh, but anyway, first world problems, right? Uh, let's break down what's happening here. So we have uh, every hundredth bar index is being plotted onto my Pine logs here in yellow because it's a warning log. Then we have real-time bar processing here. So if I go to a different market that's live and we go to, let's go to a one minute bar. Now you can see that these VAR IP variables allow us to manipulate variables on a real-time bar. So if we zoom in here, every time this bar moves or the volume changes, we're going to get a new log print here. This is obviously really useful for seeing what your script is doing. It's like having a magnifier on your own code. And so now a new bar is about to start. We should get a new log here. Now this was an error log, so it's in red. So when a new bar started, we error logged to the console and there we have it. Then if the bar is not new and it's not a historical bar, that means it's a real-time bar and our info log is plotting uh, price information. Now this particular script uses a few different methods for formatting our logs. So this is an expression we can pass into the log functions. So if I hold down control and click on this, you can see that we have the option to just pass in some text, or we have the option to pass in a format string followed by several different arguments or parameters. So this is telling the log function how to format this number. Same with this here. So we have zero is our first parameter, one is our second parameter or argument, and two is our third. And then we pass in one, two, three numbers. Um, but you don't need to do this if you don't want to. You could just pass in um, something like this, uh, plus str.toString bar index, that will do exactly the same thing. 
But if you are comfortable with slightly more advanced um, text formatting uh, options, you have these options here for quickly and easily plotting lots of number information into the log functions. The final thing to note is that this functionality is only available in scripts that you have the source code to and that you have added to your own chart. So if you get a script from the script library and you try to check the pine logs, they won't be there. You need to have added this script code to your chart yourself and have access to the script code in order for this to work. At least for now, that's what it says on the uh, log blog post. Now, next week I have another lesson planned that is going to show how to create a multi time frame market regime filter. And this script is also using the new PineScript log function. Another way to get to the log console, by the way, is to hover over your script, click on this and click Pine Logs. And here you can see I've done some test printing here. I'm printing when the very first bar on my chart started. So this is January of 2009 and I am printing how many bars on this time frame passed all three regime filters. So I'll explain all of that in next week's video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. This script is telling us that on this time frame, the market has bullish momentum on 54% of 20,000 bars in our chart. So out of 20,000 bars all the way back to 2009, this market, the S&P 500, has a 54% chance to be trading above its one week 20 EMA as one day 20 EMA and it's four hour 20 EMA. So in other words, it has an objective bullish bias, which is useful to know. And um, obviously you could display this information in other ways using PineScript uh, features, but it's really cool to just be able to quickly print this sort of information to the log uh, console and just see it. And we can also copy and paste this out of the console, which we couldn't do before. So really powerful stuff. Uh, we can also search. Um, so can type in keywords and it will search the logs. You can filter the logs. You can set a start date to display the logs. I believe there's a 10,000 log limit. So it's useful to be able to filter your logs so that uh, you can see a certain time period, see what your script was doing during certain market conditions. You can disable logging here um, and you can also search using regex or regular expression if you know how to use um, that search formatting. Um, function. But anyway, I think that's all there is to cover about this new feature. We'll obviously be using this a lot going forward in certain scripts. So we'll come back to this in future videos. But for now, that's how we use this new awesome, simple feature to debug Alpine scripts. I'll leave a link in the video description and a pinned comment below to um, the two part video series I did on debugging PineScript code including for loops and functions, that sort of thing. Obviously, if you watch those older videos, just replace whatever I'm using in those old videos with this new log feature, these new log functions, because this is much easier than the options we had in the past. It's a lot more efficient uh, and a lot more powerful. Actually, before I go, I should mention that there was just a new blog post released uh, yesterday announcing yet another new feature to PineScript, which is maps. Now maps are very similar to arrays, except that you use a key instead of an index to reference the members of this map. So I'll explain this in future videos. We'll, I'll probably do a video just on this um, when I get time. Um, it's not something I personally use very often in my scripts, but there are reasons why you might want to use this. Uh, for example, in this example code here, they put various colors into a map and you can reference these colors by their names instead of um, uh, array index number. So it just makes it a little bit more intuitive to work with certain types of data or data for you Americans out there. Uh, but anyway, we'll come back to this in a future video. Just thought I'd mention this uh, since it just came out hot off the press. So with that said, thank you for watching. Good luck with your debugging and your coding and your trading. And I'll speak with you in the next lesson. Take care, have a great weekend, and I'll speak with you soon.